able to serve. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf. His name is Nick Wright. They call him Chris Canny. With Week 10 officially in the books, we got a lot to discuss. The Cowboys and the Eagles sit tied atop the NFC East. Who's got the edge there? We'll discuss. Why is Tom Brady saying his team needs to ramp it up, even though they've got the best record in the AFC? We'll discuss. And what an incredible NFC West showdown last night. Let us discuss. Monday after Jimmy G got the Niners in field goal range, Chase McLaughlin with a chance to be the hero. But he was not, as his 47-yarder was wide left after both teams traded punt Seattle's Jason Myers. He had a 42-yarder to win the game in overtime for the Seahawks. Seattle handing the San Francisco 49ers their first loss of the season. What a game on Monday night. Here is Russell Wilson after the win. That was the craziest game I've ever been a part of. I mean, you know, I talk about a Monday night football game. It felt like NFC Championship game right there. Um, just back and forth, back and forth, two great teams going after it. It was a tough fought game. Uh, you know, it's a good team. And so we knew it was going to be a, you know, tough fight and everything. But I thought, uh, I thought our guys battled, you know, up until the end. It was, uh, it was a tough loss. There are no longer any undefeated teams left in the NFL this season. Chris Kane, we'll start with you. How did the Seahawks win this game? Well, it was with defense. Now, I know a lot of people will point to the late game heroics by Russell Wilson, that third and three that he had on the third possession of overtime when he has the 18-yard scramble to set up the Jason Myers game-winning field goal. But, I mean, it's really about what this defense did throughout the course of the entire game and in overtime. The ability to survive four turnovers by your offense and still have a chance to compete. I mean, the last time that happened in the NFL was week one where the Buffalo Bills survived four turnovers against the New York Jets. And when Adam Gase is the play caller, you can understand why the Bills had a chance in that game. But, I mean, ultimately, it's about the defense of that Seattle Seahawks. They shut down the 49ers run game. They held them to less than 100 yards rushing, 3.2 yards per carry. And that's because of the defensive front led by Jadavion Clowney, who had his oh, best game a as game. a Seahawk. And then Quandre Diggs, the guy that they traded for from the Detroit Lions, the safety, he showed up last night with an interception that led to a touchdown in that third quarter. But their defense constantly put them in positions to be able to be competitive in this game. Their defense was the one that first got them on the board. You had the strip sacks, which Clowney recovered and returned for a touchdown. Puna Ford showed up in the run game. Jaron Reed, who had missed the first six games due to suspension, he had his best game back in the four games that Jack he's played Griffin this season. made a great play late in overtime. Great play. Like he, was he also had an interception that was called back yeah. early on in that game. But, I mean, everybody for that Seahawks defense had been flying around. So, to me, you got to credit that group who's been trending in the right direction the last three games. They've held their opponents under 100 yards rushing, seven takeaways. That, to me, is the story about last night's game. Well, and I'm glad you focused on Seattle's defense, and I know we're going to spend a lot of time today focusing on Russell Wilson, who, even if the stat line doesn't show it aside from the one interception that we that we played for you in the highlight he was brilliant throughout despite being under constant duress despite having a really tough whistle go against them in multiple spots he was the best offensive player on the field for either team but the other reason why Seattle won this football game is because Jimmy Garoppolo was playing quarterback for the other football team and he was dead set on turning the ball over as much as possible he had three he could have had six mm -hmm. he was clearly skittish in the pocket especially late he there were at you could count three and i would argue four easy dropped interceptions from jimmy garoppolo and an interception that was called off early in the game that you alluded to on a very questionable defensive holding call one of the many questionable calls that went against seattle this is why even at eight no some of us were a little hesitant to anoint the 49ers as not only the best team in the NFL, but I'm not even sure about the best team in the NFC. And after last night, you're not even sure about the best team in, in the, the NFC West. West. Like, the, the, the Niners also had a very curious coaching decision late in this game when Seattle did something I couldn't believe. They're chasing the Niners in the standings. They are trying desperately to catch up. They punted the ball away with a minute 50 left in overtime and no timeouts. San Francisco, at that moment, was guaranteed a tie if they wanted it. Mm -hmm. They could run the ball, see if they broke one. If not, it's going to be a tie, and they will have a two-game lead not only on Seattle, but on New Orleans, who has two losses, and Green Bay, who has two losses. Instead, Kyle Shanahan let Jimmy G. They got the ball with a minute 50, and Seattle having no timeouts. 
Seattle got the ball back with a minute 25 because they dropped Jimmy G back three times to throw three deep passes, which led to the ultimate game-winning field goal. So I just, for San Francisco, this is a really tough loss for a number of reasons. One is you had a 10-0 lead. Mm -hmm. Another is this was the concern the skeptics had. If you, if someone finds a way to shut down your best in the NFL running game, what is your counterpunch going to be? And all of a sudden, 8-0 can turn into 9-5 real quick when you still have another game left against Seattle, you play New Orleans, you play Green Bay, and by the way, you have to go to Baltimore. So I want to give credit to Seattle, who continues to be spectacular in a year people thought was going to be a down year, and Russell Wilson's going to win the league MVP, mm -hmm. or at least right now it looks like it. But San Francisco, this was a tough loss that should have been, worst case scenario, a tough tie, and they blew that opportunity. Yeah, it was a tough loss in the play calling by Kyle Shanahan in overtime and that second possession was inexplicable and it's unexcusable but as far as Jimmy G goes I mean that's who Jimmy G is when you take away some of his best weapons remember you had no George Kittle last night he wasn't available due to injury Emmanuel Sanders he left went, in the second he, quarter he left in the second quarter and then oh by the way Matt Breida was dealing with something so you didn't have him to be that one-two punch with Tevin Coleman so uh, I mean this is who Jimmy Garoppolo is if he has to throw you into games you're going to be put in situations where He's going to make some mistakes, and he's going to get exposed. You couple that with the Seattle Seahawks defensive line rounding into form and those guys finally being able to get after it. I think last night is exactly what you're going to get. The San Francisco 49ers are built to play a specific brand of football. They're built to be able to get the lead and extend the lead. They're not a team that's built to play from behind, and I think you saw that in the second half of yesterday's it, game. Just quickly, especially, you saw Emmanuel Sanders playing really well early. He leaves with a rib injury, and the only place we saw George Kittle was in the owner's box pounded on the glass. Like So to, to be fair to them, they also were without their two best weapons in order to be able to play from behind or to be able to mount something to the passing attack those guys were up. and Emmanuel Sanders will have an MRI today it's not like it was a bruise and he'll just rest they, it might actually be something worse but I, I think what a lot of people looked at the Seattle team and thought well it's it's Russell Wilson doing everything and then everyone else sort of around him and last night for the first time you saw their defense really show up you saw their offense play in addition to whatever Russell Wilson was doing and now you look at the NFC West and you say all right the, yeah the, the Niners who had an incredible season are eight and one but but they're the Seahawks at eight and two what does this say now about the, the picture in the NFC West well listen I, I picked the Seahawks coming into this season to win that division they were a wild card team from a year ago they had no business being in the playoffs but that was in large part thanks to Russell Wilson who last year had 35 touchdowns to seven interceptions and he's off to that kind of start again this year and of course the late game heroics that we always see from him always giving his team a chance at the end of games he's always going to be able to do that but the biggest question was what was that defense going to be like and up until about a month ago in large part, it's been a pedestrian group. You look at all the defensive metrics. I mean, this was yep. this was average to below average, but then their general manager, John Snyder, decided to make a couple of decisions. He decided to trade for Jadavion Clowney. You're starting to see that pay dividends now. He traded for Quandre Diggs a few weeks ago, a, a leader in that secondary, somebody that can help to reshape the identity of that back end. You saw that pay dividends last night. Jaron Reed, who's back in a disruptive force, he had in a sack and a half. So, I mean, if that defense continues to do what it's doing and continues to progress the way that it has, and they continue to develop chemistry, I mean, this Seahawks team is not only a team that could win the NFC West, but you're talking about them being a championship contender. They're one of the six best teams in football. It's hard to argue against that right now. And I'm really glad you mentioned John, John Schneider because you have the sustained success of 20 years in New England. And it's the greatest coach ever. It's the greatest quarterback ever. It's the greatest stretch in NFL history with respect to the Steelers in the 70s, the Niners in the 80s. What New England's done over 20 years is the best. But the last half of those 20 years, Seattle's doing something not equally as impressive, but pretty damn close on the other coast of the country. Not only because they have Russell Wilson, not only because they have Pete Carroll, but because of John Schneider and the way he builds that team, a down year for them is nine and seven. Because they make moves like they trade away Frank Clark and get a one and a two, and they bring in Genevieve Clowney and only give up a three. Those are organizational moves that change the structure of your team. Frank Clark gets a monster deal from the Chiefs. They also have to pay up a first and a second. Seattle has Clowney on a one-year rental, only paying half his salary. They give up a third-round pick for him. That's what great organizations do when you also have a future first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback pulling the trigger for you. That's how you can be. You look at their roster and you're like, 
they're a good team, but not a good who's, he, who's this Hollister kid he's throwing to? Oh, <laughs> and they're 8-2 and two and a half game out of the lead in the NFC West with now the tiebreaker over San Francisco. Thanks to that great team, the 49ers are no longer undefeated, and somewhere out there, the 72 Dolphins are cheering and celebrating. <laughs> Take a break. Coming up, talk some Cowboys. Are Jerry Jones and the Cowboys afraid of the Philadelphia Eagles? It's next on FS1. You can always check us out on the Fox Sports channel on Series XM. We'll be right back. Mercury Mars, go ahead and pop that champagne. Yeah.